Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today I want to share with you a renovation video. This is a house we purchased in 2014 and we just recently decided to update and renovate the house between tenants. <music> If you enjoy watching these videos and want to help us make more, please do us a favor and hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and press that bell for notification. With that being said, let's get started. This is a two bedroom, one bath house that we purchased at auction back in 2014. I think we paid around $24,000, $25,000 after the um, auction fees and everything. So that's about what we had in it. Uh, when we bought the house, we we found that the house to be in really pretty good shape. There was really nothing that needed to be done to make the house livable. Uh, it was out of date. It had a lot of old wallpaper and old appliances and it, it wasn't very pretty necessarily, uh, but it was functional and it was, you know, something that we could easily just rent as is. And we chose to do that just to get some cash flow going and not to do a major renovation at the time. We were quickly able to rent it to someone who was single and it worked out well for the unusual layout of the house. The way the house was laid out, you actually had to walk through both bedrooms to get to the bathroom. The house had a very unusual dysfunctional layout if you really intended to use it as a two bedroom house. If you're single, it works out fine but uh, having to walk through both bedrooms to get to the bathroom was just really weird so after we rented it to a couple of single people uh, we decided that we might be able to raise the rent and do a little bit better with the house if we actually made it a more functional two-bedroom house so here's what we did first we closed in the weird door that was coming from the outside of the house into the bathroom and then we opened the wall between the kitchen and the back bedroom. This was going to create a little hallway by putting two walls up here and here. And then we closed the opening between the two bedrooms. Let's look at it again with a new layout. Okay, we're going to remove the exterior door and close in the wall that goes to the bathroom there. We're going to create a opening between the kitchen and the bedroom and a little hallway by putting a wall here and a door and a wall here and then we're going to close up the wall between the two bedrooms so here looking at the back of the house the door straight up the ramp it goes into the kitchen and the door on the right goes into the bathroom we're going to take out the door that goes into the bathroom while we were on the back of the house, we decided to remove the old screen door that on the door going to the kitchen, and we noticed that the old wooden door did not have a seal plate at the bottom. So the linoleum you're seeing there is actually the kitchen floor. So we actually replaced the back door with a brand new solid steel exterior door. And because the siding is so old and faded, we didn't try to match it. So even though it still looks like there's a door there, that's actually just a piece of vertical siding that's actually covering the hole where the door once was. Back on the inside, we've already filled in the hole and the doorway between the two bedrooms. And we've also created an opening from the kitchen into the bedroom. And we've laid some wood on the floor here, which is the beginning of our walls to close in the bedroom and create a hallway. As with any renovation, we found some unexpected problems. This one happened to be in the bathroom. We had some water damage and we began to notice that the wall was rotten next to the shower. Uh, with a little more investigation, we found out we had a leak behind the wall. So we had to fix the leak and repair the wall. So even though I don't like finding these surprises, this one was kind of a good thing because we did find a leak that we didn't know about and uh, we were able to fix it before it did a lot more damage. So here's the finished project starting in the living room. We've got new flooring. We took all the wallpaper down and we've repainted. And so here's the front bedroom with new flooring. We've filled in the wall between the two bedrooms. If you'll notice here the kitchen, we've got a new back door, new flooring, no wallpaper. 
here's the bathroom, no door, and we've got new flooring. We fixed the wall where we had the leak, and also we installed a new interior door for the bathroom. Here in the laundry room, we have new flooring and a fresh coat of paint. Here's our new hallway, and you can see it goes right into the bedroom, and you can kind of see out into the hallway from this shot. Um, this is from inside the back bedroom. We've got new flooring, new walls, new paint. We found a couple of problems outside. We found some rotten wood on the ramp on the back of the house. And we also found some rotten wood on the post on the front porch, which we replaced and painted. All in, we had about $7,000 in this renovation. It took us about six weeks to complete. This renovation allowed us to increase the rent by $100 per month. Now let's look at the revised numbers. We purchased this property for $25,000 with the added renovations of $7,000. That brings us up to a total investment of $32,000. So if we want to calculate our new return on this property after we've increased our rent by $100 a month, we can figure that out by taking the rent of $750 and multiplying it by 12. That gives us $9,000 take that nine thousand dollars and divide it into thirty two thousand which will give us 0.28 or 28 percent gross return on investment annually there is another way to look at this you know we already owned the property and we had owned it for six years at the time of the renovation and at, by that point we had already received all our money back that we had originally invested the twenty five thousand dollars because we're renting it for six fifty a month and that's about a thirty percent return per year so, uh, so we're getting in three years basically we're getting our money back so i actually out of curiosity went and looked up the numbers and we actually received forty four thousand dollars in gross rent receipts and about twenty nine thousand dollars of that was profit and so since we only paid $25,000 for the property, that means we actually made a profit of about $4,000 in the last six years, actually getting our money back and another $4,000. So that's one way to look at it. The other way is to say, well, what is the investment going forward going to return us and how quickly? So we invested $7,000 into this renovation and it's going to raise the rent by a hundred dollars starting out here and probably more as time goes on but let's say a hundred dollars right now you take that hundred dollars multiply it by 12 and you get twelve hundred dollars and you divide that by the seven thousand dollars you're getting about a seventeen percent return on investment which means it's going to take you about almost six years to get your money back so you know it's it's not as good as the original return, but it's still worth doing. None of these figures actually consider the fact that the after repair value has gone up on the property. So I estimate the $7,000 worth of improvements probably increased the value of the home by twenty dollars to $25,000 alone, which means I've already made my money back on the increase in equity. And that increase in value is going to be compounded as the appreciation goes up uh, year over year. So let me give you this example. So the house uh, that we're working on here, I would estimate before any repairs that the property was probably worth around $50,000. And doing this $7,000 worth of rehab probably increased the value of the property to after repair value of around probably around 75,000 now that the house is worth. I got more than the cost in appreciation there uh, because it cost me 7,000 but I got $25,000 worth of added value to the house so I got a little bit of appreciation there but then every year I'm going to get appreciation on the house just naturally as the market tends to appreciate every year and let's say it's as little as 1% a year, which is probably a little low. But at $50,000 value, that's only $500 a year. But at $75,000 value, that's $750 a year. So I've raised my annual appreciation, even though it's still the 1%, it's gone up 50% more 
because 750 is 50% more than $500. That will continue to grow and compound year after year. Another thing that you don't often think about is when you do a renovation, it makes your property more attractive to potential renters. In this case, especially, we made the layout flow so much better that it makes it more functional as a real two-bedroom house. So we really increased the, uh, the functionality and the, the livability of the house, which is going to make it rent quicker because we had to find a particular type of tenant that wanted to live in it the way it was before. And now it's more, it's a broader appeal uh, to more people with the renovations. This means the property spends fewer days on the market, which means less vacancy and more profit for us. If you'd like to see these renovations completed in a 360 degree video, please click on the link in the upper right hand corner. I hope you enjoyed this look at our recent renovation along with my financial analysis of the property. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button. And if you'd like to see more, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications so you know when we release new videos. And if you'd like more information on real estate investing, go to retirerichwithrealestate.com. Until next time, I'm Paul Price, teaching you how to retire rich with real estate.